My name is Melanie Coulter. I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, and Canada. And I have a nine-year-old little boy that has classical homocysteinuria. When Mason was first diagnosed with classical homocysteinuria, he was about to turn eight years old, and we were shocked because we had never heard of this disorder. And we didn't have a full understanding of how our lives were about to change at that time. And on the date that we got the initial diagnosis, we had about six hours or so in the BC Children's Hospital to kind of attend school and be taught how to manage the disorder and the diet. And when we left that day, we realized that our lives were officially changed forever. We originally knew something had to be diagnosed for Mason because we were at a routine eye doctor's appointment and the eye doctor saw something while he was examining Mason and he didn't tell us that he thought it was homocysteinuria because I don't think he thought that specifically but he did think it was some sort of a uh, metabolic disorder of some sort or some sort of um, connective tissue problem. Um, and because of that, he contacted our pediatrician and that got the ball rolling in order for us to get the diagnosis, but it did take a couple of months. It wasn't immediate and we went through a couple of months having no idea what the outcome was going to be and what the diagnosis would be. I think that having a newborn screening for classical homocysteinuria is essential everywhere. If a child, if a baby is diagnosed at birth, their outcome is completely different from somebody who isn't and in the best way because you get to control it from the get-go. Um, you get to have the ability to keep your child healthy practically from day one. When they're diagnosed late, it's usually because something is very wrong and that's terrifying as a parent. Because Mason was diagnosed at age eight, that's quite late, so therefore he was eating all of the regular foods, including high protein, from the time he was a baby until he was eight years old. So the adjustment in changing his diet was huge. Um, this was a little boy who was eating eggs and meat, all types of meat and fish, um, all of the high protein pastas and some of his favorite foods. He all of a sudden could never eat again, basically overnight. And that's a difficult thing to explain to a child, let alone enforce, um, which we of course absolutely did because we understand the risks. It's difficult to explain the risks to your little boy because you don't want to scare him. So you have to do it in an extremely age appropriate way. And that's really difficult to do. Advocacy with respect to homocysteinuria is extremely important to me. I'm starting to understand more and more that the louder our voices are, the more people are going to start to understand and the more doctors are going to start to listen. I want people to know what it is when we say what it is. Um, I want people to have an understanding of what the day-to-day -day life is um, with a child who has to have such a strict diet um, and that oh, just a little bit of protein here and there, why not, is not an okay way for us to live and the effects of that are not shown like a food allergy, it's not immediate. Um, a lot of people think, oh, well, what will happen to him if you were to give him a hamburger? Well, right now, at this very moment, probably nothing, but that could potentially change the outcome of his life if we continue to do things like that. A day in the life for Mason living with classical homocysteinuria involves so much preparation day to day in order to make sure that he's eating the proper low protein diet that he requires. So we have to think about grams of protein first thing in the morning all the way into the evening, what he's going to have at school for the day, and if he has any plans with friends or any sports activities, um, what kind of things parents might be bringing to that. Um, we have to calculate the protein in order to manage extra treats that he might be able to have <clears throat> in that particular day. We also have to make sure he drinks his formula every single day, multiple times a day. Um, we include a uh, special uh, betaine uh, powder medication that goes inside the formula. <clears throat> and he has to also have many supplements throughout the day in order to stay healthy. I wish medical professionals knew much more about classical homocysteinuria. I wish that they were able to understand what it is that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis with our child or as a patient. I think that if they 
could understand that more and listen to us when we bring our child or ourselves into the emergency room or any doctor's appointment with a concern, if they knew what it was actually about, they would take us much more seriously more immediately. Mason recently had eye surgery on both of his eyes, um, two separate surgeries, one for each eye. Uh, they, we had to have the lenses removed from his eyes because they were at extremely high risk of, uh, of dislocating. Um, in order to uh, have him seeing properly, no set of glasses was going to do that unless they removed the lenses. And after they removed the lenses, um, he's not able to see very well at all, but we now use a special contact lens that he puts in every, well, we put it in for him every day. And now he can see better than he's ever seen, which is wonderful. And he um, only needs some reading glasses for school and, and doing reading and homework and things like that. And in the future, when he's fully grown and an adult, if he chooses, he can actually have a lens replacement surgery and he'll have a permanent lens put in there and he won't have to wear contact lenses anymore. Looking back, I don't think I ever really thought anything was wrong until we saw the eye doctor for the routine appointment. Um, that was a very extreme day of fear for us when we realized the doctor thought something was seriously wrong. If I look a little bit harder back into my memory bank, I can kind of see that perhaps maybe some of his milestones weren't met as quickly as the other babies around us, but it was never anything so severe that any doctor would have ever considered homocysteinuria. He always caught up to where he needed to be. I would say to other parents who are navigating life with a child who has classical homocysteinuria, to give yourself grace, to forgive yourself because you cannot be perfect. You can try, but you can't. I would also give your child the tools to know that it's okay to be different because the reality is that they are. So if you try to resist that, it isn't going to do them any favors. And in the beginning, when I would eat prawns in the pantry in order for Mason not to miss out on one of his favorite foods, I thought I was doing him a huge favor. But the reality is, when he grows up, his friends aren't going to eat prawns in the pantry. So lean into it, support your child, so that when they grow up, they're going to know exactly what to do in those situations.